What's up, America? You already know what time it is. It's your favorite host in the world. It's Maserati Santana. Don't forget to put the king in front of it. You know what I'm saying? Today, I do want to say before I get started with the whole interview, Happy New Year to everybody out there. I hope your new year was 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 wonderful and, and you know, and fruitful to everybody out there as always and tune into my show. Make sure you start finding my show right now on YouTube. That's On The Rise TV. And my New Year's resolution is just to become a better leader. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what y'all wish for, but make sure y'all attend to it all year round instead of just the first day of the year. So without further ado, man, I got a special guest that's in the building, man. I'm talking about y'all know who it is. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to let him introduce himself because nobody can do it better. Yes, who we sir. got in the building? Y'all already know what it is, man. It's the boy Leroux and this bitch, man. It's the nasty song. Shout they won't you put that pussy <laughs> on me. Y'all already know what it is. Boy, we outside. Yes, running, sir. Lil Roo, I appreciate how you, you feeling? having me, too. Bro. How you feeling? Oh, Grace, man. Hey, bless, man. Progress and grinding, bro. Elevating every day, man. That's it, bro. Absolutely, man. So how was your holidays? Bless. A lot of money being spent. You know, yes. I got, hey, seven kids, man. In fact, I got eight kids. So eight I, just kids. Had, I just had a little boy two years ago. You feel wow. me? So eight kids. You feel me? So it's like, nasty like, song to do for you. Talk about it, man. You feel <laughs> me? Yeah, so shout out to all my kids. Yeah. Holiday was on one of them type of time. You know what it is. They tapping them pockets, man. Facts, facts. facts. Like, that's what it is, man. Hey, listen, so let's just jump right into your interview. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about where you from, bro. Where I'm from? Man, bro, I'm from Ridgeway, South Carolina. I have to say that because my population down there is like 348 people, you feel me? Mm. So when you from a place like that, I'm from a country-ass dirt road, you feel me? Like a half mile long type shit. So I'm from Ridgeway, South Carolina, like 10, 20 minutes outside of Columbia type okay. shit. Okay. Mm. So you, you would go to all, like, you would, like, when you want to yeah. shop, you go to Columbia? They got to. Ain't yeah. shit where I'm from, you feel me? Yeah. So, you know, I got to go to Columbia. That's how we get familiar with the city. Go on, you gotta go down there. You gotta interact. Females down there, you feel it, the whole shit. So that's how I got rooted in Columbia, just being from the country, man. Absolutely. And for those that, that, that don't know who Lover is, yeah. like, why don't you explain to them a little bit about what you do? Man, me, myself, personally, I just want to say, first of all, I, I, say, to say artists is to kind of put me in a category with rappers and all of the above. I'm not that. I would more so say I'm just a, I'm an entertainer. I'm from South Carolina. You know, me more than anything, bro, I'm just a, I'm just energy, bro, a whole energy, you feel me? So I just do entertainment. I put the music out, you know what I mean? I have a, a legendary record that's been lasting for over a decade called A Nasty Song. So I've just been focused on that, bro, just trying to elevate myself from what I've already created. That's it, bro. I'm just a man of growth, bro, period, you feel me? Absolutely. How did you get into music, though? Like, what was the stepping stone for you? Your mama being a crackhead, you feel me? My daddy just never claiming me and shit. And that's funny shit. My daddy name is Rue, you feel me? So Nixon called me Lil Rue for him to never, you know, be a part of my life and shit. So just circumstances really make a nigga be like, damn, what am I going to do? Discovering that shit. I discovered I could rap like eight years old, though. You feel me? Like, right. cousin shit just freestyling off the breath, funk the fire. I rapped off that shit. And ever since then, I just knew it was like, bro, it's something in this shit, like... I can make it off this shit, you feel me? And when I was coming up, it wasn't no nigga like, uh, I don't know, I can look at this nigga and say, oh, he rapping, or this nigga made it, or this nigga. I was just shit on my own shit. Like, we just gonna do this shit. Mm -hmm. I'm just rapping, so. Eight years old, really, when I found it, like, you know what? I got something with this shit. Like, I can feel it at eight. Like, I know something going on. And obviously, you got the name Lil' Roof and Pops. Yeah, 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 that's it. My daddy named Roof. My nigga named Terry Brown gave me that. God bless my nigga. He, Street nigga, just, you know, man, you look like your daddy, man. So we just gonna call you Lil' Roo, bro. And that's it. Right. Just develop from there. Right. So at what point, as far as like with the music, though, yeah. you discover that you could rap at eight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's all popping off. Yeah. Like, well, well, like to a point where it was going to pop off for you. Realistic, bro. Middle school and shit. Like, I could, I was one of the motherfuckers. Freestyling young, so we at the games, my partner be boxing. We everybody supposed to be at the game watching the game. They watching me though. We got the whole school surrounding that shit. So we battling motherfuckers. So it always felt like we go into the armory doing little talent shows and shit. Mm -hmm. We already knew like something gonna shake off. So I got my first record there when I was fifteen years old. Wow. I was signed to Electra way back with Missy Elliott, Fabulous back when that you feel me? That shit was like on that type of time. So Sylvia Rome gave my first deal. I was signed at 15. What was that like? How did that come about? Angie Stone, man. I can't Angie forget about Angie Stone. Her. You know about Angie Stone, Oh, right? absolutely. That's it. You know, you're my man. Yeah, they better know about Angie Stone. <laughs> yeah, Angie Stone, right. though. So how that happen, man? Talk to me. Angie Stone discovered us being from the country, man. I, had a, I, was, I was fucking with this dude named Baby Gray. He's a rap motherfucker now. I got to put it out there. Wow. Dude, <laughs> dude named Baby Gray. You feel me? But... 
he was discovering young talent from where we was from. And I was just always, like I say, my man Terry Brown, them boy trapping. I'm just in the hood called Middle Six. I'm living over there at the time. My mama, she smoked dope, so we in every hood. We always all over the place. So I'm over there with them boys. He come over there, just finding talent type shit. Like, y'all boys rap. Terry, all them niggas rapping. He just, I'm like, nigga, I rap. He asked me, you got crack in your pocket type shit? I'm like, damn. I ain't really got nothing, but on the low, we out here really living crazy. So right. I go down there with gang. He got his little studio build up and shit, but he had little small connections. You know, Angie Stone is from Columbia. Right. So her daughter and shit was going to high school. We around the same age. So I always had this little buzz going like, niggas know I nigga can rap. Like, bro, I really can do that shit. A young nigga, though, being so small. I'm in the club at 15 years old. I'm in the strip club 15. I'm rapping at all this shit young. So... That's how I really started. He took me down there and, you know, Angie heard me on like a mixtape. And I ended up parting ways for them dudes, though, back during that time. Cause all that snitching allegations and all that, I couldn't be around them. And even young, I was just standing on bullshit principles, I say, being street on some wild shit. But it was real shit. I, I still live by that law. I couldn't be associated with that shit, though. Just being on street nigga time. Separated from them dudes, man. And, you know, Angie Stone just heard the music and shit from there. We just start putting pieces together, man. So At 15. 15, but it's it's deeper than that, though. Bro. My shit's so deep, it's crazy. My shit sound like a, a <laughs> it sound like a fairy tale a little bit. Cause when I was 15, I was locked up for not going to school though, for truancy. Cause I ended up meeting my partner. He did 25 years in the feds. You feel me? He just came home maybe like I say three weeks ago. But day for day, 25 years, you feel mm -hmm. me? So I um got with him when I was 15. My man was really on, you know what I mean? I can't talk too crazy because there ain't no statute of limitation in South Carolina, you feel right. me? So, but my man was really living life on a whole nother level. Getting with him was the beginning of starting it off for me because I made a song about something that happened with him that, you know, which one of his partners robbed him for like a million dollars. I made a song about it though at 15 and that shit was really, Started the street buzz. Everybody like, yo, this little nigga talking this. Everybody know it's real. You feel me? Right. So that's really what started it up. It's a song called We'll Destroy. You can look it up and shit. That's what really started. She heard that song and the yeah, buzz we, that was behind it. The people sang it out in the club. I'm, I'm 15, 16. They singing that shit. So, you know, and boom, that was it, man. It, it was kind of crazy. From there. Yeah, hell yeah. So let's talk about like the other. You you were signed. How many times were you signed? I've been signed three times. Three man. times. Let's talk yeah. about the record labels that signed you. I know Def Jam was one. Electra was was my first record deal. Like I say, Sylvia Wrong with uh, back with Fabulous and all those shit. Way way back in the day, I didn't have a chance to put out no records or no songs with them. They had a merger back with Universal bought up all the smaller companies. I was caught up in that at fifteen, sixteen. So they gave me like twenty five thousand dollars, but just wrote that shit off as like tax right off. So I was caught up in the merger. When Universal merged together, took all the labels up, they, you see, there ain't no more Electra now. Right. They all we is Universal now. That's why Sylvia Rome, all those work for these big companies. But that's who was running that shit at the time. So I was dropped from that shit doing that. And that's just how fast it was fast it was on, fast as it was over. You feel me? I never put a record out. I really got signed just off being young, having talent. It wasn't no um I got all these followers and shit. You just had to have real right. raw talent. Like, well fuck exactly. look at you and be like, oh, here's a star. We're gonna sign them. So you know, I never had a chance to put no records out, so it just dropped me, kind of charged it for what it was. You know what I'm saying? We gonna merge. We don't really know about the project like that. We just gonna drop the shit. Right. So like Nasty song, you had to be at least what 21? Yeah, 24. When, Nasty, when 24? I first, yeah, when I first got signed with this shit, but I had it when I was like 22, 23. You right. feel me? But that was after I had a deal with Capital Records as well, a single deal though, with a song called "Don't I Look Good." So I did that off the Bubba Sparks beat. I don't know if you remember Bubba Sparks had yeah. the song. I don't remember Bubba Sparks. Yeah, you feel if you don't remember Bubba Sparks, then you want in the air. Yeah, you feel me? You feel you know me? I'm saying so you want in the air if you don't I remember did, Bubba Sparks. Uh, I did a record off of one of his songs on a mixtape yeah. called Don't I Look Good. I did a song called Don't I Look Good. The streets just picked that shit up so fast because it was already buzzed from what I've already had did. Mm -hmm. But they just picked that up instantly. People just started fucking with it. That was doing the lean with it, rock with it, arrow. It was one of those records that just fit in with shit. I was end up getting a little single deal off there. We got like like twenty thousand up front for that shit, and shit. I do name Ronnie Johnson signed me. He was fucking with me though. He wanted to do the single deal, and if it was popping off, he's gonna give me an album deal. He was fucking with me before he could do the album deal. He had a heart attack and he died though. My man Ronnie Johnson, R.P. to that nigga. Man. He died. You feel me? In the middle of my shit. So 
I know you felt like uh, come on, bro. I know you felt like Claude Baines and Ray Gibson yeah, when yeah. they were about to get caught. <laughs> you feel me? Yes, sir, man. And it's it's so, it, 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 what's this uh, yes, old buddy? He died on the shitter. Yes, like, sir, you know man. Man. So, so that was it for yeah, me. Yeah, my yeah. shit was that was another circumstance where it's back to square one. Yeah. But the funny thing about that, I said that to say I was trying to feed them the nasty song back when I had that record. Like I was trying to give Capital that song way back then. They mm-hmm. they just wouldn't understand that shit. Like. They wouldn't get it. It was slow at the time. Everybody, everything was fast. So they was like, nah, we going to pass on that. But my man Ronnie Johnson, he understood it, but he passed away. So that's what another thing. I got dropped from that. We, we back. I just ran the deal out. Not really drop. I just did the whole single thing. It was over with. So, But I had that record. I knew that that was something, though. So we just, we just instantly went to the radio with that bitch. Like, now, nah, just drop that on our own. Mm-hmm. And from day one, it just what was over. the What was the concept behind Nasty Song? Like... For I know real, we, we got our own perspective of it, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man, really, man, I'm just in a space of, like, making good music. You know what I'm saying? Like, just being organic, being different in a time where it was not like that. It was just, like I say, snap records, everybody doing that. I felt like that shit was just blurring. It was just playing the same line. You know what I mean? It's playing with everybody. I just said, fuck it, we're going to do one like this. Mm-hmm. I was, I'm was i always big on that. Like, making something that's just out of, just out of the ordinary. I got a record called I'm Bad Off From The Drop. It's probably going to fuck people up. It's just insane. Just way different type shit. You feel me? So, that's that's one of my niches, man. I just, I got the ability to throw that punch from an area you ain't looking for that motherfucker, Facts. man. You feel me? Now, before we drop the all the all-time legendary song, yeah. man, I got to ask you, though, like, how long did it take you? What's the, what's how did you break that record though, Lil? Uh, the nasty the song. Nasty. So how did you break that record though? What did it take for Shit, you to break man, it? Man, God Almighty in heaven above. You feel me? I never put no money into it in the beginning. It organically just grew on its own. I just really just gave it to a DJ. He started playing it, and then from there, that shit just started going. So you know, everybody's just picking it up. They picking it up. I, at one time, see, it's always you always demand at one time. I, I ain't gonna say always. I ain't gonna say everybody. My circumstance. Mm. It was one time where I was just. That motherfucker, everybody want to get behind. They, they want to push me to the top. So, shit, they just, you know, I'm putting shit out. They going to drop on. They jumping on that shit. So, everything really was just working. So, I just put it out. And just organically just caught its own, it just caught its own wave. You feel me? I just rolled the wave. Still to this day, I'm riding the wave off that shit. That shit just caught its own wave, bro. Right. And, like, but see, you got to think about it, though. When you was breaking the record then. Yeah. That was 13 years ago. Yeah. Now, what do you think the difference would be, like, if you was breaking the record now? If, if I was like, like more, yeah, that record or yeah. a new record. No, I'm just saying, like, what would be the difference? Like, how you broke out with uh oh, yeah, with a nasty song, and let's say you redid nasty song all over again, and you was putting it out now. Yeah. Like, what would what would have been the difference as far as like marketing and promoting it? Really, though, it's the same thing. We just didn't have Instagram and Facebook. We mm-hmm. was in the club with the bottles and pulling up with the cars, and we doing all the extra shit. It's just reality, though. It's just when you see us. Damn, they really doing that shit. Damn, right. brother, I'm really living that shit like that. So it was just one of them things where people can really tell it's organic. Like, okay, damn, this shit really is that. They know my man doing 25 years. They know all this shit really didn't happen. So my city was just like, who else can we shoot? He the one. You feel me? Let's get behind this. Brother had a couple deals. I done brought different shit to the city. You know what I mean? Shooting videos in the project with real million dollar cameras and shit. So we just shit like that, man. It was just at a perfect time where the city was just behind that shit. On a whole nother level, it just organically just sprouted, man. That's a fact. Well, without further ado, man, i never seen you live in performance. Yeah, yeah, performing yeah. Performing yeah. this song, but I get it tonight on All Around TV. <laughs> Let's listen, it. go ahead and put them headphones on okay, and we go, that record. We gonna go in. Okay, we gonna go in one time. Y'all already know what it is, man. The boy Lil Rue and this bitch, man, Mr. Nasty Song, man. The nasty song, man. Classic shit. Y'all know what's going on. We sipping it. Yo. What we know? Hold on. Hold on. Shut. I tell her, won't you put that pussy on me? Yeah, girl, I say, boom, 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 boom. hold up, hey, what we tell her, let's go. What, this is another nasty song, I love the way she free. With no panties on. And I say, boom, 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 boom. what's up? Yeah, girl, I know I your say, baby mama twerking, hands up, we going crazy, let's go. See, girl, I love the way you're freaking, and pull that on the grind. See, I got money for you, and you can get it nine. I speed it in the club, what's up? my nigga throw it on. And we gon' spend that motherfucking money till we done, girl. And you can buy it, buy it. So, I love the way you do it. And every day you move that, just like the inner. Uh huh. I take you to the cool. Let's go. And we can get it. Pop I tell her, shake it, stop it, pop it, girl. Won't you drop it? 
We control, I gotta let you know And every time I hit it, she scream her uncle, uncle But I ain't in it no more And I got money for you, shawty And this is how we go See, girl, I hope that you be free She slide it down the road Hey, look, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on Hold on, you can't, 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 you that shit like a gift and a curse on a level, you feel me? On a high level for me. Cause I fuck with the record, but the punishment behind that motherfucker is insane. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> to the point where I feel like I want to change my name type shit. You feel right, me? Man. Like So what do you get out of the punishment from it? Okay, so you know Charlemagne the God with, with the Breakfast Club, man. Absolutely. Absolutely, right? So I had that record. Like I say, the city was buzzing with that shit, but he wanted to get me with uh, a situation with uh with Asylum, you remember them? Mm -hmm. Back with Jim Jones and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he wanted to put me over there because he had a little situation with them. But the shit never, the shit never transpired the right way. But he had me sign to this contract before we went over there. He like, yo, sign this shit. I'm gonna get you a deal, guarantee we go over here. This shit done. I'm like, all right, bet. I'm signing because that's my man, you feel me? But I'm gonna tell niggas the game. If you got a nigga that's in the music business and he bring you to a situation, a nigga's supposed to say, hey, brother, get your own lawyer. Don't get my lawyer. Right. You get another nigga, you feel me? Read over your shit, and if it makes sense, we go back and do this shit. Anytime a nigga rushing you in the room, I already learned from experience. That's your ass. It's some money being rushed out your, out your right. pockets, you feel me? So he signed me. He like, yo, sign this shit. And at the time, Wendy Williams, husband, Kevin Williams, this nigga just got so much pull. He got niggas blackmailed up. He had switch beats. I'm talking about, I had that nigga about a chokehold. That's back when that nigga was leaving his wife. Going with Alicia Keys, but it wasn't even public like that. So he had that shit like on some sneaky shit. Like, yeah, we got this nigga. We gonna get this nigga to come to your meeting. I'm talking about, I'm all in the studio with boy. He giving me beats and that. I don't know these niggas from nothing. But I just can feel like these niggas got some dirty shit going on. Right. So they take me to the meeting. Switch beats outside with his uncle. The boy looking hella sleepy. He looking like he done been up all night, but he got to do this because he don't want, you know what I mean? I, I can feel the energy. So we go upstairs. Nigga like, yeah, we are. Uh, he the record and shit, they like, yeah. You know, they hear my little buzz and shit going, cause I'm getting a little thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a show at a time. So I'm like, you I'm kind of feeling myself. You feel me? like, <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Right. So I'm in here with my man. I'm like, shit, let's do the deal. So the dude kind of like, I forgot the white guy name, yo. Bald head white guy. He like, at the time Boosie was over there. He was like, so what you think about uh, putting a little Boosie on there? Shout out to my nigga Boosie. We got a song together now. But I'm like, hell no. Nah. I want to put a little Boosie on my shit. You feel me? I'm, that's just how I'm feeling. I just didn't hear him on the Nasty song. You feel me? So transpired, the nigga was like, man, we ain't even, even want to do the deal type shit. So he pulled Switch Beat to the back. They on some other business, you feel me? So we walk out of there, though. But mind you, I'm not even mindful. I done already signed with Charlemagne on some earlier in the day shit. I'm leaving there. I go home the next day. I'm still on my rap shit. You feel me? I'm still on what I do. My shit still buzzing, because that's why he got me there. He already know everybody in the city telling him, oh, that nigga Ru got this song, this shit going crazy, you feel me? So that's why he got me there. So he get me back up there. I get back home, I'm hitting bro back up there. I'm like, bro, I want to drop a little tape and shit, you know what I mean? Give me some mixtape, let's make this shit happen. I got one mixtape, him and DJ b Lord hosted this shit. I try to put this shit out, but bro ain't never. B-Lord? Yeah, shout out to my nigga DJ b Lord. He, they not getting me no... No copies of this shit. And then I'm telling bro, help me press these motherfuckers. I'm, I'm po hustling. I'm getting a little thousand dollars. I'm trying to figure it out. So I'm like, bro, press up me some music. Let's get this shit popping. <sighs> nothing. Niggas gave me crooked energy. I ain't getting nothing from nobody. Niggas ain't tapping in with me. I supposed to have met a nigga on the side of the road. They DJ Dice. I never forget. We're supposed to be had a box of mixtape. Because we at that era where you hand to hand this shit. It ain't no, can only follow me. Nigga had to pull up on nigga. Hey, man, put a CD on the window. Word we was living that. Yeah, Word we living out. that. So I'm like, yo, give me the CD. I'm trying to be in the club with this shit. Nothing. Nothing transpired. So I start building up my own shit. Fuck it. I ain't even on. Fuck with bro. We, we, we do what we do. I got a nigga named Jay Stevenson. He helped fuck me over though. He brought me up there. He he supposed to be the nigga reading over the contract. You know you had these fake ass managers. See, I gotta get niggas the game. Fake ass manager nigga supposed to read over the contract and make sure shit. He don't know what the fuck going on. He just trying to get it. You know, I, and I respect that nigga trying to figure it out too as well. Anyway, we do that. My man supposed to have me going. You know the right way with the shit. So 
He end up though, he's a hustler nigga. He can talk in any room. That nigga get in any room. He'll get in the White House. Guarantee he'll get in the White House. <laughs> this nigga will get us in the White House. I promise you. No pat down. No, we we, we get in, him. bro. I him. promise you, he gonna get you in there. He, so he can get you in any situation. You know, TK and Cash. Okay. They remember that three times in yeah. a row. Those my little homies. Like yeah. I end up putting them boys in with DTP when they were signed with them. I did that. I put them in that situation because we were always running together. Them niggas from Augusta, the dude that was doing that for me. They had to give the gab. He's from Augusta. So I'm linking up with them niggas. We running like a team of niggas now. So we moving around like that. He's taking me to showcases. He walking me in these rooms where I, this nigga got a buzz on his record. I'm going to get you in this room. So he end up making me meet this nigga from uh, London, England. Named Abraham Muhammad, my nigga. That's still my nigga. He hit my shit. We are uh, outside of U-Haul parking lot. Blaze Pizza in Atlanta. I'll never forget this shit. We, we sitting in the parking lot. My man playing the music. He poker facing my shit. Just kind of like. Whatever. So I, I fucking, uh, I'm, I'm kind of like, damn. You know, but fuck with me at night. He ain't really fucking with me. The next morning, though, gang called me on some shit like, hey, I can get you signed with Def Jam. Meet me over here. I want to uh, get you. I think we met over there at the 12, the 12 Hotel. He like, meet me over here. I got KP, Kawan Prather. That's the nigga that signed T.I. The I'm Serious album. He was behind yeah. that whole shit. So he like, nigga, bring me. I'm going to make you over there. Meet me over there. I'm going to bring your boy. We're going we gonna to link it up. So I'm like, bet. I go over there. The nigga KP like, yeah, it's on. We been looking for you. Acorn brother, boo. He been trying to sign me at the time, but I'm, t I'm learning that through KP. They tell me how it's like a little war going on. I'm like, oh, I'm feeling this shit. This shit buzzing. So niggas is on that time. So I'm like, bet. So I'm calling Charlemagne now. I'm like, nigga, this shit is up, nigga. We finna get a deal with Def Jam. Niggas is on us, nigga. This shit finna pop off. That nigga was like, nigga, you ain't finna get no deal with Def Jam instantly. That's that nigga energy. You ain't finna get no deal with Def Jam, nigga. I need KP finna sign you to uh to Ghetto Vision. You know Yellow Wolf? Mm -hmm. Remember him? <clears throat> he was signed to that. He was like, you finna sign to them niggas. But that was for Yellow Wolf. You feel me? I linked the fuck with Yellow Wolf too. Me and him got a hard ass song together. But that's before that time and shit, before Yellow Wolf was really popping off. He like, you finna sign to them niggas. I'm like, nigga, ain't no Ghetto Vision shit. We finna really go to Def Jam. So I'm like, shh. Chilling and shit, my man, like, don't even trip. They got a showcase coming up next, like, the next day, though, where all the execs in town, L.A. Reed, I'm talking about Akon there, everybody, it's, just, it's a big room full of execs. These niggas are just having a showcase, but they showing all the new talent they done signed and shit. And I ain't had ink my deal at the time. So the nigga was like, you can come to the showcase, but you ain't got to perform and then because your deal guaranteed. Because I had my butt, my shit was going crazy. Like, I tell you, Fedville up here was niggas was really spinning that record. So I, my, my BDS numbers and shit was stupid. So it wasn't even no need for me to be having to prove myself. It was already proven that the record worked. Mm -hmm. So when it got to the showcase though, niggas called me like 30 minutes before, but they want you to perform. This shit going down. I'm like, oh shit, so we rushing. I get over that bitch. Man, I'm talking about, I never forget LA reading that bitch smoking a cigar. It's dark in there, the light's low. It's one mic in the middle of the room with a light on that bitch. I'm talking about, it's really what it now. I come in there knocking shit over, burn shit all loud. Every, I'm, I'm out of control. Soon as I get on the mic though, they drop my shit. We turn up. When I leave that shit, LA Reed come to me like, yo, whatever we gotta do to get this man signed, tell the KP, yo, let's do that shit. So I'm leaving that bitch. I'm geeked up. I'm like, oh, I just heard the real. L.A. Reed say that sign yeah, this thing. Yeah, oh, I right. know it's yeah, so you one of them now. But nigga, I'm a fish for it's a rap. <laughs> I'm seeing Jeezy, me and Jeezy shaking hands. Hey, come, nigga, I done made it. You yeah. feel me? I'm telling so instantly. I'm calling Charlemagne. That's my man at the time. Bro, now this is all the way real. I just see L.A. Reed. It, it's up, nigga. So that nigga just kind of like, all right. He kind of disappeared after that. Whew. Like a day later, I'm still in Atlanta. keeping me in Atlanta now because it's finna happen. I'm at KP House. I'm in the studio. I'm just freestyle rapping and shit. We doing shit. That nigga was like, hey, come here. Put me out of the booth. He's like, yo, that nigga Charlemagne said the deal through them. It ain't gonna be no deal. I'm instantly. So dead. now he was pulling you on your contract? Yeah, I'm okay. instantly. I'm instantly crushed. Because this nigga never put no money into my life. Never gave me a dollar. Nigga never put no type of sex. I got niggas that's doing real time for this shit. You feel me? Like, nigga, you never invested nothing into me ever. You just knew some niggas and was trying to give me a deal and it didn't work out. But you got me under a contract though. I trusted you as being hometown. We gonna do this shit. And I'm, I'm naive, you feel me young? I ain't really got no guidance with this shit. But I did that shit on that. So he pulled his contract. Like, this nigga signed with us. I'm going crazy. Cause I'm supposed to get $150,000 up front. So, so let me ask you this question right mm -hmm. here. All right, so the first question I want to ask you. Yeah. Is, uh, do you still have a relationship with Charlamagne the guy? Hell no. I mean, I don't know. I don't have no hate for bro, but right. I don't have no no type of connection with him. You feel me? He right. just kind of act like 
it ain't never happened type shit. You feel me? Fuck it. I'm just going to go on with my life. Because after that, he went up. Instant. It was up. I, I, I'm not saying my deal got him up or nothing, but his breakfast club shit started happening like right after that. It was like in the same type of time. Like a year later, that shit was just going up after that. What year you say this might be? 09 type shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So second question, which is the follow-up question for you. Um, do you feel like he was wrong? For pulling that contract move on you. Hell yeah. I'm literally crying to this man on the phone. Like, I'm crying, little, real snot bubble type shit. Bruh, I've been working my whole life for this. He know, he watched me come up. This nigga watched when I started. I met this nigga when I was real young at an interview. He was working in Charleston at a radio station. He knew the grind, you feel me? So, I'm feeling like, nigga, you, boy, you already know. You never did nothing for this. Charlemagne, did you use Lil Rue <laughs> for, for an example? No, I'm not. I don't know, bro. But I'm like, bro, you never did nothing for this for this movement. Wow. I'm feeling the real thing to do is to just tear the contract up. Fuck it. You know, brother made his own way. I couldn't get him a deal. Let's just let it be what it is. Niggas wasn't on that. It was money on the line. He wasn't with no breakfast club at the time. It just I'm just a co-host with Wendy Williams. We doing our little shit. So I'm trying to link with my nigga, hoping he can elevate me, because he up there with Wendy Williams. I'm like, you feel me? We from South Carolina. Ain't nobody never got on. Ever, ever, ever. So I'm like, bro, I know Charlemagne probably can help this shit grow. Bro, took pure advantage of that shit. So when he pulled that, first he was like, yo, give me 40 grand, and we'll let you up out of it. I'm like, 40,000? I'm with that. 150 bang, I'll give you 40. It's easy. So after, I was ready to do 40 so fast, and niggas come back and like, bro, let me get an 80. Wow. 80 hours. Fuck it, gotta do that 80 please. Cause I could never sleep with this nigga being in my shit like that when I knew that you never put nothing in this shit, my nigga. It's real niggas. But you, but you still end up signing with Def Jam though, right? Yeah, cause I paid the money. Yeah. I, my first day, I didn't have no money. When I got signed, niggas get them advances and get a chance to do all that shit, but I never did that. I got $30,000 out of that shit after paying lawyers, paying all these niggas. I walked away with 30 grand out of that shit. Now how many niggas <laughs> How many niggas knew that? Yeah, yeah. Look, you Nobody know what? It's crazy. Know, it's crazy because I told you on the Rise TV we get the exclusive yeah, American. Yeah. Listen, Lil Rue is on the look right now with yeah, us, man. Yeah. The first show, Fact. you know what I'm saying? Into the new year, yeah, but yeah. nigga, that's something I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, I walked away with thirty thousand out of there. Out of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars, I walked away with thirty grand out of that. That is crazy. That look, you know what? That's crazy grand. because you talk about your career. Yeah. Gotta mention Charlemagne the God. I got to. It's a part of my It's journey. a part of your yeah, And exactly. a lot of niggas try to say you trying to clown off. I'm not clown off this nigga. This nigga is a significant part of my transition. But I'm telling niggas, that's why I, I'm I'm an example of what it feels like to go through that shit though. And I like to speak on where it transpired me to today though. Without that though, I would never be the nigga I am today. I'm comfortable with that now. That was the greatest thing ever happened to me. I never knew it at the time. At the time I'm gonna Kill this nigga. Bro, I really used to be on some shit like, I'm about to just go up here. I'm about to just go up here and just end my shit and his shit. Let's just end it all. You feel yeah. on some real psychopath yeah. shit. Because that was my life. I didn't have nothing else to really bank on. I got all these kids. I'm young. I'm, I'm from the south. I was sleeping on the air mattress when I went up there with that nigga. Didn't even invite you to the breakfast club. Never ever in life. That nigga, that nigga was scared to sit down with me for sure. I know the real. I'm going to tell the truth. I, my shit is, is documented. You can look this up. His name is, they had a stupid dope move. That was his record company. That shit is in my Def Jam contract. Bro probably still getting a percentage of the Nancy song to this day. You feel me? For sure. Probably. He is. That's what I'm saying. He's still <laughs> getting some percentage. That's what I'm saying. So it's just, bro. That's it. It is what it is. It's the truth. It's my life, bro. So, so, so why you already heated up yeah. in the moment, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Let's talk about this remake by Lotto. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. Lotto makes that the That was beautiful. I could, yo, I could, see, the crazy thing about that, I got. I see. I, now I got to get deeper with my journey, man. Cause like, when I'm in the space, I don't even be tripping on the rap shit. I just be on some really. Cause I've been meditating, praying up on some shit, a couple of years before all this start transpiring with the lotto shit and all that. I'm big on 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 mine, like building the mental space up. Cause I understood through all that. I never. I always knew I had the talent to be great, but I never understood like why am I not. Cracking the fucking door completely down. Like, I know, bro, I know these niggas not fucking with I always felt that. But I understood when I started really discovering what really problems is, is my thinking process. The way I think about shit and my thought is really attracting my life or what am I receiving in my shit. So when I start implementing thinking, these headphones went out, bro. But when I start implementing uh, I just them singing into my, I mean, implementing uh, right thinking into my whole career, yeah. it built me up on a whole nother, you know, a whole nother level. So, I start putting thinking into my shit on a level, bro. Like, it's just, I don't know, the mind to me is really what 
orchestrated, changed my whole shit, bro, to where it's at now. The law of attraction. I know you know about all that type of shit. You ain't no fool, you know what I mean? You in tune, so that type of shit really changed my life, though. That whole shit with Charlamagne, I would have never discovered that without that pain from there, the punishment from there, the naiveness, the dumbness shit from there. Being, just being that from there. I, when I discovered that, that's what really let me accept that shit and forgive, bro, and not have no grudge against this man and that. You know what I mean? Just right thinking, bro. You know what I mean? Right, but you got to think about it. You was young, too, though. Hell yeah, 24. So you, so, so you didn't know, yeah, like, all the proper steps anyway. Yeah, he did, though. I'm never going to let him out of the choke on yeah. He did. He did. You feel me? And when you do that, that's why you can't bring me to the breakfast club. You can't look no man. You know you did that man like that, man. You can't sit around that man like that. But is it, is it something that could be resolved? Hell with, yeah. With a, with a conversation. A handshake, a conversation. Bro, $80,000 is a lot of money. But it's not a lot of money when you understand how to make money. Have you, you ever tried to reach out to him? Yeah, of course. He don't... Never. He never going... It's egos, man. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of... You know what I mean? Shit where... It's hard to tell a motherfucker, man, I fucked this man over for no reason. Tell the world that. I'm just a dirty-ass nigga, bro. I fucked bro over for no reason at all. I just needed some money at the time. To say that in public, motherfucker look at you like, what type of nigga? You feel me? Your wow. old man's like that? He from the mud like you? You gonna do him like that? You look like shit. You feel me? But who wanna look like shit? You feel me? Ain't no nigga gonna sit down with no nigga that got to tell the truth. So I get it. That's why I say I, I get all that never connecting with me. That's why now we on the approach of... I'm going to say this, God, not me, he making the challenge, the good needs challenge come mm -hmm. about. I can't make that happen. That shit just happened through the universe. What is the good needs challenge? I don't know. You feel me? Some shit a nigga made in Toledo, Ohio. I just wake up one day and this shit happening. You feel me? So I never made the good needs challenge up. It's just organic. God is 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 moving. My thought, when I'm meditating, though, I don't know what the fuck I'm finna manifest, but I'm, I'm something finna happen, though. So I'm big on meditation. I spent hours on that shit. You feel me? So it's just all about that type of shit now. Now it's on another level. I can't, I'm also over messenger now. We focus on the message now. That other shit was cool for what it was, but now we more on message, man. What's the purpose of this shit? Why did I go through all that with Charlamagne? And, and see, you know what, though? Like, I'm pulling all this information out of you right yeah, yeah. now, right? Uh -huh. But it's also like, what if, like, BT call you and want to do a song yeah. on you? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To... To know the real do it, story. Though. But see, to know the real story, because it's a lot of people, bro, yeah. that, that, you know, think about the Franchise Boys. Yeah, yeah. Where they at? I love them boys, too. Man, what's the story it. behind that? Yeah, I love you them feel what I'm saying? Too. Obviously, when you don't see people like that no more, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's because somewhere down the line, they got fucked up. For sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. Oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Believe that. Believe that. This game is at an all-time dirty level, but... That's why I say it's going to take a, a, a brave soul, man, to understand that the industry that that's, we know as of what it is to transpire and change that shit into something else. It's going to take money, first of all, and it's going to take proper thinking, man. A nigga that's not afraid to die. You feel what I'm saying? That's the truth. And not dying for, oh, we just on some real gangster shit, just really politically, you just willing to die for this shit to change over. That's why I feel like people like Nipsey Hussle mm. was like, not a sacrifice. I don't want to say nobody killed him for that, but he, to me, was like, though first step in the transition of, okay, hip-hop is about to shift now. A lot of niggas don't look at that as that, but that's what my movement really was like. You know what? It's time now, bro. Like, it's time to rise up. Us type of niggas, niggas that's like him, that's what type of core I got in me, bro. Like, what? That's why I've never been no gossip nigga. I'm never on no internet. I'm not with none of that funny business because I know what life really stands on, bro. That shit. Well, when you think about music and you yeah. think about rappers and you... Uh, a guy I had up here yeah. recently mm -hmm. in 2022, right yeah. before the year ended, Charleston White, a person that Come on hate, hate rappers. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. yeah, yeah what, what, is, what, is your, what, is, what is your take on Charleston White? I fuck with Charleston White. Yeah. I fuck with Charleston Listen, I fuck with Charleston White. One thing about the truth, this is what the truth is to me. You might not like the truth, but you got to respect the truth. No matter how, his delivery can be not good. I, I go through that with females all the time. I don't like, I like what I said to the girl, she can fuck with, but how I said it, she don't like it. And that's what he give niggas. They don't like how that nigga saying it, but if you sit back and you think about that you nigga like saying it, bro, tell her the real truth, right. though. You feel me? So I respect his his message. Like, he really tell the truth. You feel me? These rappers been doing this shit for years, but you know, I fuck with his mindset, man. Because, but to me, Charleston White is a part of that shift, though. He probably don't even know it. It's something that's going on. It's time for real shit to arise. This shit can't, it can't survive like this, man. That's right. why Young Thug and all these niggas getting killed. And all, it, this shit is, God is really showing an example of this, this wrong thinking shit. This is what it looked like when you do it wrong. 
You feel me? You have to be man enough to accept that. Yeah. Hell yeah, I because did it wrong. When 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 you was doing your thing and you didn't have that many rappers getting killed. Hell no. Nah. Or getting was locked no up for like just, that. you know. No shit like that. And niggas' yeah. energy was different though. Everybody more so was open. Me and Rich Boy. Throw some D's on that bitch. Yeah. I got with that nigga one day just on some, this nigga know this nigga. He see me, bro, let's just do a song together. We used to go to the Ozone Awards. I don't know if niggas know that. I'm talking about way back in the day where all the rappers come from all over the world. I'm talking about Trade the Truth and them niggas in there way back. Mike Jones, all them niggas. We all in this one building. We in this bitch, not just for one day, though. We here all week. We mix it, vibe it. Ain't no Instagram. It's handshakes and give out CDs. Give me your phone number. Giving out cards. Yeah, it's it love in here. So you had to be thorough for a nigga to fuck with you back in them days. That's why I like that shit so much more. Today, you could be anything. You could be anything. You could be whatever the fuck you want. That's why they got niggas that snitching and all these niggas, they still get on. They don't, it, you could be anything now. You ain't have. You don't have to be organic. That shit done went away from that, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't so, blame the industry, though. You have to blame the people for that. Right. Yeah. Right. So how did you meet? What is your relationship with Wally Coyote? Man, that's my boy. Wally is a nigga that just genuinely trying to help a nigga though. You feel me? I come to bro after I rebuild myself because I was at a point where I was slummed out. You feel me? Definitely a homeless type shit in Atlanta. You feel me? I'm losing everything in my life. I don't got shit. But I <laughs> put them huffs in the ground. You feel me? Right. We figure that shit out. We get the building the wings back up. Okay, once I got them flopping, I tap in with Wally like, bro, look, I got a bag. This is what I'm trying to do. So he tapped me in with some empire shit. He's like, bro, I can push you with Empire. We just got to get shit going a certain way. You know, we're going to ink some shit up when it's the right time, and we're going to go there. And I just told Wally, he really get that I'm not trying to be no no industry nigga. I'm not trying to sign with no major unless it's major, like it's really right. So, you know, and that's just what it is. And he willing to try something new. You feel mm. me? Wally, one of them niggas that's willing to try. Like, he get it. He know about all the Charlotte, He just willing to try. You know what I mean? That nigga know my story is organic, too, though. He been with me since way back, right. way back. All right. He said your life is like a movie. It definitely is. That shit sound fake. It sound fake. It, it, I hear the stories. I be like, this shit, damn, this shit really happened, though. This shit really happened, though. You feel me? So that's just what it is, man. For sure, bro. Right. So what have you been up to since the Nasty song? What you doing now? And what are you bringing to the table for 2023? For more than 20 anything, man, mm -hmm. we, uh, now I'm, I'm partnered up with one of my partners from where I'm from. We started a company, LLC, Presidential Music Group. But we signed an artist now. You know what I mean? So... I'm also now, it's like, I feel like the game fucked me for so bad, I don't even want to be a part of it. I just want the whole game now. You feel right. me? Fuck this, I'm gonna be fitting in, and I just wanna sign, nigga, we just want the whole shit now. We working to be a Def Jam or Atlantic or a Epic, like we wanna be able to give our $100 million budget to artists coming up versus just, you know, signing to a major and saying, hey, we signed to this motherfucker, we wanna, you know, get a million dollars, or get a hundred million from you. Nah, we wanna be able to give a hundred million dollars. So our whole approach now, we just really looking for distribution and marketing versus just, you know, trying to get an upfront advance and all that. We don't really need that type of shit. We just looking for marketing distribution and that's what I've been focused on. Building my financial stability to the point where I don't need a label, you know what I'm saying? And I, I learned that through my boy Nip Hustle, mm. that once you, Chase shit outside of your dream, it makes your dream a lot easier. So I, I, I spent a lot of years building up, you know, financial stability to wear rap. I ain't gonna say I don't give a fuck about it, but it ain't as serious as it used to be. You know what I mean? That shit used to be everything, I, that's all I had. You know what I mean? Now it's like, I fuck with it. It work, it work. It don't, I'm cool <laughs> with that too. You feel me? I've done a lot already. I'm not tripping on it. I'm okay with ups and downs and, you know what I mean, failures. That shit will make you whole, man. So now I'm more so like, Shit, you know, what we finna do? Like, if we just gonna be a part of the game? At, at my age, 30, I'm 37, you feel me? I can't be a part of this shit now. It's like you gotta have CEO mentality. You gotta have life-changing energy. I got a son that's 20 years old, you feel me? So this shit ain't just regular rap shit for me. This nigga watch it. He gonna watch shit like this. What type of energy am I carrying? I'm not trying to be no old nigga looking young, you feel me? And I don't consider myself an old nigga, but I'm getting old dirt, so I just represent that shit as what it is. Well, right. you feel me? Right. So that's what we is, bro. So we just a nigga that just trying to president your music group. We just really trying to build ourselves as a major record label. Like we don't want to be just another nigga signed Atlantic with a deal. We want to be Atlantic, you feel me? And that's what it is. So I feel like the only way I'm going to be able to pull this off, money first, you know what I mean? And good music, man. I feel confident I can do this shit because I had a record that have lasted over there, 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 over there. You feel me? This one, though. Still playing. The you club. feel me? And I, and I never, I tell niggas this all the time. That song is C minus to what I really can do. That's not my, 
That's nowhere that, near my best. That voice. song was a seed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, that yeah. grew. Yeah, but it, but it's not my. It's nowhere near my best work, though. Nowhere near. That shit is so far from what I really can do. That's what make me confident at this age. Be like, but I'm still, I still can do it. I got kids though. I ask them, do I still got it? They be like, yeah, this shit there. <laughs> you you feel me? I, I got you. While we speaking on the best music, <laughs> let's talk about what you got coming up, man. We got, yeah, yeah. we got the record. You sent the record in, like yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? Um, Adina Howard. Uh, I know, I know. I can be a freak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we did that uh, over. Yeah. yeah, we freaked that over. My my artist on that. His name Myers. Yo, nigga that I believe in, he just, he one of them, man. He just got that shit in him. You know what I'm saying? I think he could be bigger than Drake, any nigga. He just got that shit in him. Thanks. Well, America, man, before we wrap things up, we will listen to the new record and what he got going on, Little Rule. Yes, sir. The record Like Me. Please introduce that record to the people. Put yeah, the yeah, headphones yeah. on. Hey, the boy Little Rule, man. Like Me, my boy Maya is on the motherfucking feature, man. I gonna be your free. That's it. <laughs> So you need these radio records. So you, you gotta have these radio records. It's gonna go crazy. See, I can be a freak until the day, until the dawn. See, we can go all through the night, till the early morning. See, you know I need them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I can be a freak until the day, until the dawn. See, we can go all through the night, till the early morning. You know I need them. To do me right, I can give you love, baby. We can do the night. And I just like your soul in your body. And I just wanna take him on a ride. Got my tongue working really fast. I'm buying from that pussy moving to that ass. I won't fucking crash, I'ma do it fucking bad. Know that I'm the fucking one, I got you calling me your ass. Creaming on my dick, sucking on the shit, she use a whole lot of spit. Try that she legit, know that she don't quit. Me and you together, girl, I'm feeling all that shit, I love her. To do me right, right now. I beat that pussy up, I call it fight. Now. I got her on her knees like religion. That pussy what I see, so I'm gon' kill her. See, I can be a freak until the day, until the dawn. See, we can all through the night till the early morning. See, I can be a freak until the day, until the dawn. See, we can all through the night. Okay, you done went through all of them. <laughs> you done went through them all, man. Right? Uh-huh. <laughs> Six in the morning, yeah. baby, you can call me when you're home. I'm going to kill up on you. This time, I'm going to let you come on. Uh-huh. Early morning, so I'm joining in the morning. Got sex late night in my phone. I put the house on, bro. Facts, we out of here. We can fuck anywhere like we torn. I'm a real true freak. Yeah, that Grammy feeling great. Yeah, yeah, you bring it to Tito. Yeah, yeah, give it that, give it that, nigga. Yeah. 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 That's a radio record right there. That, that feel me? That's all I be on. Like, bro, I know what it takes to really, you know what I mean, make the beat. But that's not even a, that's not even a, a, a slow, that's like a, that's a light jam, though. I got other shit, though. That's like a light jam. That's just like the start some off for the, for the spring and shit. But that's see, my, my, my question is to you is, yeah. do you think yeah. that you can make another record yeah. that can last another 13 years? Of course. Of course. Hell yeah. To me, I'm not even trying to do that, though. It's just about creating music to me. Like, that shit, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. I'm cool with however it play out. I believe definitely I can. Hell yeah, man. Because to me now, though, it, back then, time was different. Now, though, niggas need something for the soul, though. You have to fuck with more of a, you know, what's going, what, what's the message that's going to stand? The t- like, a song like the Nasty song, it, it's sex. That shit going to last forever. Right. You know what I mean? Now it's just about what do we create to make niggas really, you know what I mean? To me, I got to go back to the essence of it to make a nigga think to really be like, damn. This shit really that, you know what I mean? So, so you say you didn't want to be a part of this industry anymore? No, hell no. Nah. So I never was. You, they don't you, fuck with me for real. <laughs> nah, nah, you definitely was a part of the industry. <laughs> they don't fuck with me for real, man. You was real. definitely, you was definitely a part of the yeah, industry. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. are you saying you retiring? Are yeah, you retiring nah. from the, or are you, are you still in the game? Nah, I mean, when a nigga say retire, what I mean, like you don't do music. You just you you ain't doing music no more. No, 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 hell no. I I would never feel like I'm retiring from music or whatever. I I would make music till I die type shit. Even if a nigga ain't hearing it, like I know I'm gonna make music because it's certain shit I wouldn't even fuck with just on the regular. Let's listen to other niggas. Like I don't want to hear that. 
I like to say shit there. You know what I mean? Sometimes me and my guys, I make music for what we really living for. Niggas be like, yo, yeah, send me that song, bro. Right. And shit that I ain't put out type shit. So music forever gonna be a part of me. Do I see myself rapping for another five, ten years type shit? I, I'm with I'm with however the game come to me. We'll be shit. we'll be 40 soon. You feel me? I'm cool with that though. This is the thing I wanna say too. Age and, and all that shit is cool. Like LeBron James, for example. LeBron James is almost 40 years old, but he's still running the ball like he's a young dude and all the above. The shit with age and all this shit, I still feel 15, 16, 17. It's mental, though. Once your mind is at a level and people can really see you transfer that through your physical and shit, they respect that. Most older rappers and shit, they look old. They feel old. When you see that nigga on stage like genuine doing that thing, <laughs> he's old. He look old. Yeah. You feel me? So but, you, you don't respect but that on so, a high level. Not though. to cut you off, but what yeah, social media yeah, did yeah. for him was <laughs> he realized how social media loved the fact that he yeah, did yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now he incorporated that into his, his shows. But I, I, I said that to you, genuine to say, when you old, it's obvious. Yeah, it ain't no fucking. Oh, he got another. Like LeBron still playing because he look like he can still play. He still can get up and down. He jumping out the gym. This shit still happening. So for me, I'm still getting shows, but I'm still getting five thousand dollars a show. You feel me? Thirteen years later, you feel me? Shot in uh, Richmond, Virginia, January 27th. We in that bitch. Okay. So it, I just come off a tour the whole November. You know what I mean? Started the uh, well, I think it started like the, the middle of October. So bro, it's just been like, I, if I quit, I'd be stupid. I'm still getting five thousand dollars a show. Who gonna turn that kind of money down? Like, right. that, that's just like, bro, I'd be a fool to quit. If the game don't need me no more, it's gonna let me know. Right. They're not gonna play this shit. It's not gonna be a good need challenge. It's not gonna be a mulatto buying the song. So the game yeah, will let crazy. you know. You feel me? The game will let you know, like, hey, bro, it's over. Yeah, the game's still telling me, hey. Got a chance, Jack. Do something. What's the what's, what's and, next? And, and see, with her buying a song, she just kept it alive for some more years. You feel me? And she paid me for that, though. Look, you look, look, You feel me? Gave me thirty five percent of the record, though. Wow. You feel me? So every time that thing go up, I get paid from that. She did it the right way. You feel me? Come Shout on, out to Mulatto. Shout out to Mulatto. They did that shit the right way. You feel yeah. me? So I, I'm not mad when people say, "Oh, people want me like she stole your song." Man, uh -huh. y'all naive. Yeah. This shit is about to take me to the next level. And but I go back to, to that mulatto thing. Need challenge, bro. That's God letting me know that it's still a time to get in there. But see, bro. you also broke history for South Carolina too, though. Yeah. How many how many records that you know? Yeah. From people that you've been around for all these years that you've been in the game. Yeah. That actually had a remake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Niggas ain't. You a part of that now. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But I was the first nigga to ever get a record deal from South, South Carolina. Carolina. Rapper-wise? Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Nobody never did that before. That's why I go back to that little boy. I moved in like, bro, fuck it. We don't got no examples. I got to do something. You feel <laughs> me? I'm that bad. nigga. I'm him. I'm going to make it shake. And when we crack the mold of it, that's why niggas from South Carolina got to realize I, we be sad down there. I'm telling you, all the rappers there, we sad, bro. Yeah. We don't got no chance, bro. We don't got no NBA, no NFL, no MLB, no nothing there. It ain't no nigga that can say, oh, he made it. Like, I, even like the baby. I fuck with the baby. The baby made it from Charlotte. But he had Charlotte Hornet, the Panthers. He can come out his door and get on ice, whatever, and see something. Where we from, you don't see nothing. That shit just, damn. You know what I mean? I think about shit. That's how I used to get out of the hood, like, Damn, maybe one day I could go to Vegas. You feel me? Like, my mind just take me there. So I could rap, bro. Like, I'm really going to make it one day. Just kept believing that shit. That's why when I found the law of attraction, I knew that shit was real because I had already did it. I had already took myself on that dirt road to be in front of these niggas. I'm like, oh, yeah. That shit is fag. I'm about to be fucking with my cousin that introduced me to that was a Christian. That nigga called me one day. Nigga say, oh, cuz, fuck, fuck church, cuz. That's what his first for. I'm tripping on that. You know, I'm, a, I'm hands in the Holy Ghost field. With, you feel me? With the, yeah. That nigga was like, yo, fuck church, cuz. I'm like, what? This nigga, the nigga, I gotta go deeper with that. The nigga, like, his wife ended up dating the uh, pastor's son type shit. So my nigga had to study the Bible so much, well, he done maxed out type shit. He done been, his whole, he been years of it. Nigga found that, put me on that game. And when I discovered that, I told my nigga, I said, cuz, I don't give a fuck if you go back to church ever. I know that this shit right here, this is the truth, cuz. This, this is really it. You really just opened me all the way up. That nigga was like, cuz, I'm telling you, this is it. And ever since then, bro, my life has been transitioning so beautiful. Like, niggas be like, bro, you been off the game for this many years. Most people think I would probably be struggling. Or, man, I got, any, I got more money now than I ever had in my life. And that's the wildest part about it. And that shit only came from when I corrected my mind. I was broke as hell trying to 
be a rapper, trying to figure it out, get show for show, spinning that shit. Man, we going to buy land now. Niggas got acres. Niggas going to open up shoe store clubs. Niggas ain't even own that type of well, shit. Well, you got to, you all, all, always, in 2023, my gift to you, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm bro. saying? Yeah. Uh, on the Rise TV, you got to look at it like this, Lil Ru. Right. You are OG in the game. That's you right. know what I'm saying? You you look at all the new rappers, Finesse, Two Times, Nardo Wick, all these, you know, all these artists that's out uh, now. You was before them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You actually seen how the grind was before the social media. So you can put yourself in that category as being one of the OGs from the early 2000s. For sure. You feel what I'm saying? And uh, I was in that area. I think everybody in this room that was from that area. You know what I'm saying? And um, to for me to be interviewing you is yeah. crazy, too. You know what I'm saying? Because we all know about the nasty song, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I can say I did some things on that, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you, but, but, yeah, but you, yeah, already know, you already know what it is, man. Listen, do you <laughs> have any last inspirational words, I man? I do, We're man. About to wrap this thing I up. just want to tell you, bro, I appreciate y'all allowing me to uh, get the story out. Because I yeah. don't really do a lot of this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not no nigga that's just, uh, I'm big on, I ain't big on getting on the internet and just telling niggas this, but I know that it's time for that for me, though. You feel me? My story been so, everybody wanted me like, damn, you got this song, bro. What the fuck? Like, why you ain't just pop off crazy after that? But my journey just different. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I, I'm, a, I'm a nigga that's uh, building from purpose standpoint. Like, most niggas just rapping for money, and that's where I started from that. You know what I mean? I just want to get my family out the hood. That was the simple shit. But when I discover, like, bro, it's like, what the fuck is we doing this shit for? What you rapping for? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can't just say I'm rapping for bitches and clothes and cars. Hell, dog. You think God took me through all that shit just to rap and get some money and some houses? Ain't no way. It's purpose. It's the message. What are we finna tell a nigga? All the struggle is to show a nigga, this is what right thinking do, my nigga. When you correct your mind and correct your inner man, build yourself up to a certain level without even having to lean on the industry or lean on the poisonous of this rap shit, you ain't got to lean on that to still be an artist. You can lean on yourself. Build you and your family up to a level. This shit can't deny you. And that's what I'm trying to show niggas. I fact. can't deny nigga. No matter how many years I've laid isolated from the game by choice, mm -hmm. now I'm just choosing to come back at this shit. You know, And that's why I say the Good Knees Challenge and the Mulatto shit, that's just God Almighty confirmation to me that it's on. You know what I mean? Still do your shit. Gang. Don't, don't give up because a nigga say you one hit one door. What it, man? God is showing you, bro. This is one hit. This shit outlasting niggas that had, you feel it, two, three songs. I got to tell my partners, like, I see niggas. That's why I fuck with Nipsey, the marathon shit. Most niggas is sprinting past me. But as I still run my marathon, I'm starting to look up and I see these niggas again now. I'm catching them. I'm like the tortoise in the hair store. You feel? I see our niggas now. I, I just kept running my race at my pace, bro. So I'm cool with being 37. We approaching this shit, but it's now it's my mental. Well, how am I reapproaching it? Am I still on the same nasty song shit? Of course not. But is that still a part of me? Hell yeah. We love pussy forever. Let it ride it out. <laughs> so that's what it is, bro. I just really want to, you know, leave niggas with that. You know, when you see me, respect me for the artistry, not for the for the um the shit that most niggas want to be. We not right. on no tough guy shit, man. We not on no oh nigga, we got the most money shit, nigga. We on elevation. Building the next man up, man. Because we understand at the end of the day, it's all about mindset. That's a fact. If you can give a man a thought of being an inspiration, it's the greatest thing you can give to the next nigga, man. So that's just what we represent, bro. That's, that's it. what it is, people. You heard it first. My homie Lil Rule. That's our shit. On the, on the, on, on on the, the show with me rise, tonight. Yeah, man. you better yeah. believe it, man. You already know what it is. You know what I'm saying? Shout out, to, shout out to Vic Frost. We in the Deep Freeze Productions. Yes, I love you it. You know what I'm saying? Always keeping it down. The first episode of... 2023. Oh, I got the first one. Yeah, you got the first one in 2023, man. man. So good definitely too, big bro. salute. You know what I'm saying? Also, make sure y'all find and follow. Where to follow you at one more time, bro? Hey, man. At Lil Ru Official on Instagram. Lil Ru Samuel on Facebook. Hey, man. You just Lil Ru, whatever. Google my shit. I'm popping the fuck up, man. You know what's going on. Absolutely. And book these shows. Yeah. We coming to fuck y'all yeah. hoes in y'all city. We coming to turn the fuck up. <laughs> Ain't nothing never gonna change, you feel me? We gonna always get this money. And my dog's home from jail now. They did 25 years, so I ain't gotta say free niggas no more. These niggas free is on now. We feeling good. So we just reapproaching the game with good energy. I just, you know what I mean? When you see me, Approach me with the, you know what I mean? The same energy. We just <laughs> organic, bro. Fuck with the squad, man. That's what it is. America, <laughs> listen, yo. 
<laughs> Don't never let nobody tell you what you cannot what? do, man. Failure what is, is not the absence of success. Come on. Failure is a neglect of not trying. You okay, feel me? Talk about and it. also, potential is not what you've done already. You know what I'm saying? It's what you haven't done. So make sure you tap in with me. Find your boy, Mozzie Roddy Santana, on Facebook. Also, Instagram, MozzieBreaker18. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, On The Rise TV. Until next time, yeah, yeah, you've yeah. been a good crowd. See you next time. Bitch. Love, peace, happiness. You know what it is. I'm giving up my soul. So